money flows clockwise yep. around the table. Emma! You know, at least something that comes up all the time with my clients is where to sit, mm -hmm. what seat. Yeah. You know, if there's a live one at the table, should I sit behind him, in front of him, and across the table, or if there's a really good player at the table, you know, what should be the reasons of why I sit where? What should I do? Great topic. Let's roll. And it really is a good topic, and there's a lot of money to be made by making these decisions right. One of the big things that comes up a lot is stack sizes. Okay. That's really one of the surprise aspects of this whole discussion that mm -hmm. should be way at the top. I want big stacks on my right and not on my left. The mm -hmm. main reason is because basically money flows clockwise yep. around the table. And so if there's a big stack on my right, mm -hmm. then it's more likely to flow in my direction. Conversely, yep. if there's a big stack on my left, then I'm going to be running into it. I'm playing out of position against a big stack more right. frequently, and I don't want to do that. So let's say I'm playing 2-5, and everybody at the table has um, 500 and I've got a thousand, and there's one other player that has a thousand. If they're sitting right behind me, that's terrible, because that person has an advantage on me all the time by sitting behind me, and that's the only person that I can lose all of my thousand to. Right. So that's a situation where I'd rather be sitting at any seat at the table except right in front of the big stack, if I have a big stack. Yep. That's the way, <laughs> that's our cat, Listen. Emma. She's not being tortured, she's actually carrying a little mousy around. So what, let's start with the live one. Somebody who's raising a lot and is, you know, the, uh -huh. the guy that everybody at the table is paying attention to. Right. You know, the standard thing used to be, you want to sit behind the live one, directly behind, as close as you can get, mm -hmm. to isolate. Right. Right. But if you're playing a type of game where in the middle positions, you're not really interested in coming in there with marginal hands. Right. Because you're inviting other people to like re-isolate or right. whatever. Right. Uh -huh. To me, there isn't that much value in being directly behind the live. Room. Right. Unless you're really, really planning to jam it up from middle position, which is something I'm not planning to yeah, do. Yeah, I have no desire to do that. Yeah. Sure. So the most important thing is that you don't want the live ones on your left. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't want them on your immediate left or the next left or the next seat over. Right. And the reason is if, if they're not in any of those three seats, then that means every time you have the button cut off and hijack, you're going to be behind them. Right. And those are the hands you're going to be playing most often anyway. You're going to be playing most of your hands out of those three seats. Right. And therefore, the maniac is in front of you when you tend to be playing. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Okay, got it. I actually use stack sizes for seat changes in that way, but another way too. I want the small stack on my left mm -hmm. because that's the most I can lose to that person who has the advantage over me on every hand of being behind me. Yes. So let's say everyone at the table has a thousand and I'm going to buy in for a thousand and there's two seats open and there's one player at the table has 300. Mm -hmm. I want to be to the right of that person. Right. And Absolutely. very, very often I have changed seats in the middle of a game to move to a seat that has one or two small stacks on my left. So another way to profit from mm -hmm. good seat selection mm -hmm. is to think about where the tight players are. Right. And, and, and the value that comes from having them on your left. Okay. Okay. So if you have a really tight player on your left, that means that that seat is plugged mm -hmm. and no loose players can sit there. Right. That's really a big thing. If you're going to be playing a five or six hour session, and you're mm -hmm. grinding or whatever, and you've got a, another guy who's going to be there all day and he's on your left and he's playing tight, then no, no loose players are ever going to sit next to you. So there's a double value of having a tight player on your left. One is they plug the seat. 
The other one is when you're in the cutoff mm -hmm. and you make your raise, you're more likely to earn the button. Exactly. Whereas That's if right. you have a loose aggressive player on your left, you might not even try those plays because they're just going to swallow you up every time. Amen. So, so again, very often I've changed seats to move in front of tight players and small stack players. Got it. Another player you'd like to have on your left? Mm -hmm. Telegraphers. Oh, for sure. They let you know loud and clear that they're getting ready to fold. He has been transmitting steadily for two hours. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's just kind of like they just sort of like look away, but others literally pick their cards up and cock mm -hmm. them ready to fire into the muck. Right. If right. you get that guy or gal on your left, yes. that means that you can get the button a bunch of extra times from the right. cutoff. And right. it's difficult to overstate that value. All you have to do is be prepared to look left and, oh, there the cards are cocked. Yeah. I have the button. And whatever your opening rules for the button are or mm -hmm. hand playing rules, you can now follow them even though you're in the yeah. cutoff. Yeah, it's a promotion, basically. And the opponents don't know that you're playing a promoted range. <laughs> right. So there's some deception there, too. So I know, Tommy, you have your favorite seat at the table. What is I it? I do. The one seat. And that's the one <laughs> to the dealer's immediate left. Right. I remember when we were uh, at the World Series and we were playing every day and you kept coming up to me. You're like, why would you sit in the one seat? Because you, you can't see that. You can't see the nine seat. Cause well, but you have your own issue. Yeah, I have my own issue because I can't see the nine seat for the one seat. Oh, and because I <laughs> slammed my knee into the chip drop right. box. You were amazed yeah. at how I could never hit that box. Yeah, somehow you, after 30 and I was years, like, you still never do that. Well, it I took 15 years of training. <laughs> okay, yeah. So why do you like the one seat? I like the one seat because one of my uh, primary, <laughs> I like to be comfortable. Uh -huh. I just like to be comfortable right. at the table, uh -huh. you know, and in the one seat, I know I always have enough space and I can get in and out easily no matter how jammed up the rest of the table is. And I've just come to feel re really comfortable there. I can see the nine seat. Uh -huh. Okay. You know, I just kind of peek around yeah. a little bit. You know. And you know, now based on that, I think I'm going to start trying out the one. It's comfy. <laughs> So, Tommy, we've covered a bunch of stuff, but I mm -hmm. think there's a pretty simple summary. You want the big stacks and the tough players on your right. Mm -hmm. You want the tight players, the short stacks, and the telegraphers on your left. Yep. And you want the maniac 180 degrees opposite around the table from you. Right. There you go. Now you know where to sit. <laughs>